grated cheese, breadcrumbs, parsley, greens. What do these ingredients have in common? Super easy, healthy, deliciously satisfying soup. Okay, so like, there's also stock. We're not gonna count that as an ingredient. Okay, that's a given. That's implied. You can't have soup without liquid. Five ingredients soup. Stracciatella. Stracciatella. You do want to stress on the T syllable around the end, and of course double C in Italian sounds like CH. Stracciatella. Stracciatella. I'm not gonna say it like that the whole time. I'm sorry. But it'd be fine in English to say stracciatella. Stracciatella. Or in Italian, stracciatella. Stra stracciatella. Stracciatella translates to little rags in Italian and can reference three different foods from three different regions. We have a cheese from Puglia in the south which was created from the leftover shreds from mozzarella production soaked in cream. I would say maybe the inverse of burrata? Seems like relatively the same thing, but the burrata has the mozzarella on the outside with the cream on the inside, and this is like shredded mozzarella with cream around it. That's really not the point because this episode is about soup. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if you want me to try making stracciatella cheese. Probably the most well-known version of stracciatella is the gelato flavor that originated in Lombardy in the north. And it is a milk flavored ice cream with irregular shreds of chocolate in it. Kind of like a chocolate chip ice cream more or less actually named after our egg drop soup, which originates, of course, in Rome. In many parts of Italy, it is common to have a stuffed pasta and brodo in broth on Christmas day, but there are usually large quantities of broth left over. The internet says centuries ago that the stracciatella soup was invented as a byproduct of Christmas broth. Enter egg drop soup. A leftover is born. So I guess now that we are here in January, this is rather fitting as a post Christmas food item. But in truth, I drink this soup, or eat this soup, drink soup, eat soup. I think it's both. I'm getting away from myself. Anyway. In truth, I consume this soup year-round, even in the summertime. Consume. That's, there we are. That's the center. All right. Basically, whenever I'm short on food inspiration or time and just want to eat something relatively healthy, or if I just bought fresh bread and I want an excuse to eat bread and butter for dinner. Am I the only one who does that? Now, let me know in the comments below if you eat bread and butter for dinner just on its own and have no shame about it. <laughs> I'd say the soup comes together in about 20 minutes or less if you skip the cheese rind. Pro tip, don't skip the cheese rind. I do like to freeze my stock in Pyrex containers. You can learn about this in my stock making video. Get your broth warming up like four cups for two people. We don't do hard numbers around here, but that's a good rule. Two cups per person or two cups per serving. So we have to defrost this. We'll come back in a minute. And whatever that is in metric that I'm sure my editor will throw up on the screen because I live in America where they don't teach us that. Just kidding, I know like some, but not that much. That's like what, two cups is like half a liter-ish? A traditional broth might include a number of meats, but you can absolutely just use chicken broth in this case, or veggie broth if you want it to be vegetarian. 
I guess you could buy it in a store or whatever. If you like throwing your money away. Drop your cheese rind in. Don't sleep on the cheese rind. I learned about this while traveling in Liguria. I was enjoying a very memorable bowl of soup and discovered a cheese rind at the bottom. I've been doing this practice ever since. Bring the broth to a simmer and keep it on low for about 15 minutes or as long as it takes you to put together the rest of the meal. If you've got an hour to spare, you can let it go for longer for that good, good cheesy broth. This is optional, but a little splash cooking wine can really lift up your stock. Who couldn't use a splash of wine? In the meantime, we're going to mix most of our other ingredients into a bowl. Now here's where things get murky because I don't like hard numbers. I looked online to see what other people were up to with their ratios and it really, really varies. So I say do what feels right and here's what I did. In a bowl, combine roughly two eggs, like a half cup of grated cheese. You can use Parmesan or grana, people's parm, as I like to say. You could mix in a little bit of pecorino. I wouldn't suggest doing all pecorino. It might just be too intense, but you could do a mixture of all of them. Roughly two to four tablespoons of chopped parsley. I think this wound up being about a quarter cup, so four tablespoons. But like, don't go chopping up your parsley and trying to scoop it into a measuring spoon. Nobody needs that. Make an educated guess. And a tablespoon of breadcrumbs. These are somewhat optional. Many recipes omit it entirely. And if you don't eat gluten, by all means, go ahead and do that. I've also seen some recipes that call for semolina flour instead, but I learned to make it with breadcrumbs, so that's what we're doing. Add salt and pepper and nutmeg if you've got it, and mix everything together in a bowl. Spices don't count as ingredients. You can use the bowl that you're going to serve yourself in, and that way you have one less dish to do later. You're welcome. So at this part, we're basically done. The mixture is ready to be dropped into the soup whenever you feel your broth has been sufficiently infused with cheese. Hope nobody forgot to salt their broth if their broth is not yet salted. But first, we must discuss greens. Now, I think most commonly the soup is made with spinach, which is fine and great, and you should absolutely do that if you want to. But I'm a person who's much more likely to have kale on hand. And I would argue that the soup keeps better overnight when you use kale, but either way. If you're doing kale, you'll want to chop this up and add it to your broth first, and let it cook down for a minute. But if you're adding spinach, you can add this basically at the same time as the eggs, either right before or right after. It doesn't need to cook as long. Some recipes would suggest that you chop it up, but I would say don't bother. Now it is time to drop your mixture in and give it a very gentle stir. Plop that into a bowl and you are now entitled to eat as much bread and butter for dinner as you would like. Just kidding, the soup is actually really delicious on its own or with bread, either way. And there you go, Italian egg drop soup. Here to warm you up in the middle of winter. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or feel free to buy me a cup of coffee in the link in the description. Lord knows my brain could use some extra coffee in these winter months. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, it's a little soup goblin trying to I'm run through my set. Tommy ate the soup. I'm not a soup goblin. He ate it already. There's none for me left. It was very tasty.